Hello and welcome to the Moodle Man blog. Uh, my name's Julian Ridden, aka the Moodle Man. And without further ado, let's start talking about this week's subject, which is auto enrollment of students into class groups. Now, a problem that many administrators or, or, or even teachers, I guess, have uh, with Moodle is that it's a course based system. And so, how do you handle large groups of students being enrolled into class groups? Now, uh, here at Riverview, we don't lock our system down as such. There is an authentication process to get into Moodle, but then we happily allow our students to uh, enrol in any course that they like. A Year 7 student may choose to look at Year 8, 9 or 10. And by allowing students to do their own enrolment, it's also allowed me to do a very clever thing using what's called group keys, so that when a student enters a course, they're automatically enrolled into the correct class group. So let me uh, show you how I've done that and how you can do it yourselves in your own sites. So here we have our, our Moodle here, uh, we call it Quantum, um, it is a live site, but I've set up a test course for today to be able to show you how we set this up. So without further ado, I do say that a lot, I apologise, uh, let's jump into why I am test course. So here's just a simple course I've set up just for you to show a, a course in action. Uh, to set up this, the first thing we have to do is go into our course settings um, and set up an enrolment key. Now most of you know about enrolment keys already. The audit of enrollment key is a password that stops users getting into a course unless either they've paid or they're allowed to get in. But what we're going to do it here is to use it not actually as a way of keeping people out, but as a way of actually being able to sort them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually type an enrollment key of guest. You can call it anything you want, but I've actually intentionally just wanted to call this enrollment key guest. Uh, I want this course when a student logs in to request a key, and this here will at least force that request to happen. That's all I've done, I hit save changes. What I'm going to do now though is go into my group settings. Now when I create a group, and many of you may have done this already, um, you can call it whatever you want, so I'm actually going to create a group called Class A. And each group can also have its own key, and this is where the magic happens. Because what's happened now is when a student goes to enrol in this course, it will look first of all at the course key and see it, that it doesn't match and then it starts looking at each in, of the individual group keys and the group key that it matches it will actually let the student in and auto enroll them into this group so here's you know class A and just for the sake of it let's create uh, another couple called class B and class C now again all I'm typing in as a key here is class B um, this is not here to actually keep people out of the course. Um, I actually have the same key across every single course in my site. But what the student does is actually looks at their timetable and says, oh look, I'm in class B, and they just type in the appropriate key. So look, there's a class B key, and let's do one more group. And I'm sure you're gonna see a pattern here. Class C with the enrollment key of class C. Again, just unmask that so you can see it. So that's all I've had to do to set it up. And you know, I normally set up A through to H in each of the courses that I've created. Now, let me log in as a student. So I'm just going to log out of myself. I have a test student called I am test. If I can just remember the password, that would help. There we go. Now this student is going to enrol in a course. And he's going to come down and I set up this course called uh, I am test course. If I could find where I put it, that'd be fantastic. There it is. You notice it's actually requesting an enrollment key. Now, I'll show you how to do this yourselves in a second. What I've actually done is also put a description in front of every single one of my courses that actually tells the student what their class code is. So this is the system that we use here at Riverview. You know, 9 Mat A is a 9 Maths A class, 11 Latin C or 7 Science H and it tells the student how to look at their timetable and then just type in the appropriate code. So if I just typed in something stupid, incorrect, it won't let me into the course at all. But if I actually type in, let's say, class C, it recognises that that code's correct and has now let me into that course. Very simple from the student's perspective. Well now let me just log back in as a teacher again and show you what has happened with the grouping. Excuse me while I log back in. If I now go back into the I am test course and look at my groups, you'll see that not only has a student been brought into this course, but they've immediately been assigned 
to class C. So this is a very simple way. You just set up all of these exactly the same for every course and a student is actually then prompted themselves to type in the correct key. And because I don't have a problem, in fact I encourage my students to explore inside our Moodle site, um, if they're not actually a member of the course at all, they're just having a look, they type in the word guest. And because the word guest is the standard key, the key I put at the course level, it will let them in and not assign them to a class group, which makes it a lot easier for teachers. If a student gets it wrong, they stuff it up, well they just unenroll themselves and re-enroll themselves again with the correct key. Now I also mentioned very briefly how um, with, when a student goes to enter each course, that actually had a description. Well we haven't done any hacking to have that description appear of what to do. It's actually just done through the language settings. Now you need to be logged in as administrator to do this, but in administrator, if you go to language and click on language editing, it gives administrators the ability to be able to edit any language pack that they like. So if I go edit words or phrases, and I choose file to edit. Now this, for those of you who need to know it, is actually located within what's called moodle.php. This is where all the generic settings are kept. Let's wait for that to load. And you'll here you'll see the language pack. So every time it says the word activities, it displays activities. And this is where normally you use it to do different languages. But you can also change the terms. If I scroll down to enrollment, it's all alphabetical, so I'm just going down to enrollment keys down here somewhere I've either missed it here we go and normally enrollment key this is where it goes through and actually ask them to please you know check your enrollment key or contact a teacher I have just replaced this with my own text as you can see here in fact you can put HTML in so you know my bold and italicizing and changing colors to red and so forth is all done right here but this is where when a student goes to log in, it now tells me exactly what to do. So it's a very simple, very uh, easy to use toolkit. I know it won't uh, obviously apply to every scenario, especially those who need to protect their courses. But uh, if you are in a school environment, then look, this is one I very highly recommend. And it also really self-monitors itself. And the reason I say that, if a student's in the wrong class group, well then they can't participate in classes. Uh, they get in trouble with their teacher when their forum isn't popping up and they have to fix it themselves. Uh, likewise, when it comes to uploading assignment tasks, the teacher says, look, I didn't get your homework, where is it? Oh, I enrolled in the wrong class group, and they can fix it up themselves on the fly. So it really does uh, self-fulfill its own prophecy, I guess. Students have to do it correctly to be able to participate in the class. Look, I hope you found that useful. Uh, it's just another little tip I hope to share with you. If you do have any uh, other ideas or, or, or comments on this, please make sure you put them in the, uh, in the blog post. If you are looking at this at YouTube, Check it out at moodleman.edublogs.org. Until next week, I'll see you then.